In this video, I will explain what a wallet is, what the difference is between a non-deterministic wallet and a deterministic wallet, what mnemonic words are, and what Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 is. What is a wallet? A wallet stores private keys. The public addresses are automatically derived from the private keys. A wallet does not store coins, such as Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether, etc. If you open your Bitcoin wallet and one of your Bitcoin addresses shows that it has a balance of 5 Bitcoins, then these Bitcoins are not actually stored in your wallet. It means that these 5 Bitcoins were transferred to your Bitcoin address during a transaction. This transaction information is stored on the blockchain. Your wallet queries the blockchain and searches for unspent transaction outputs for all your Bitcoin addresses to display their balances. The Bitcoins on these unspent transaction outputs can be unlocked and transferred to another Bitcoin address using the private keys stored in the wallet. The word wallet is misleading. It just stores private keys and not the coins. If you lose your wallet, you lose your private keys. And if you lose your private keys, you cannot unlock on spent transaction outputs. This means you have lost access to your coins. However, if you can restore your private keys, for example, you have made a backup, you can always access your coins. First, I will explain what a non-deterministic wallet is. Wallet stores private keys, but they also create these private keys. A non-deterministic wallet does the following. It generates private key one, which in turn creates a corresponding public address 1. It generates private key 2, which in turn creates a corresponding public address 2, etc. The private keys are randomly generated numbers, which are not related to each other. You cannot derive these private keys with an algorithm. Hence the words non-deterministic. If you use a non-deterministic wallet, you must make regular backups of these private keys. If you have problems with your wallet, you can restore your wallet by importing the backup private keys. To explain the inner working of a non-deterministic wallet, see this web application. This web application. Please use this web application for educational purpose only. I've selected Bitcoin over here. Each time if I press the generate button, it generates a random number. This random number is used to create a private address and the corresponding public address. The generated addresses are not related to each other. And this is what happens inside a non-deterministic wallet. Now I will explain what a deterministic wallet is. A deterministic wallet uses 12 to 24 words to create a 512-bit seed. For example, the words choice, fatal, slap, rookie, etc. These words are called mnemonic words because they are more easily to remember than this long hexadecimal string. The 512-bit seed is used to create a master private key. This master private key in turn is used to create private keys and corresponding public addresses. Here an overview of what happens inside the deterministic wallet. It generates 12 to 24 words, which is used to create a 512-bit seed. The 512-bit seed is used as input to create a master private key. And the master private key is used to generate private keys and public addresses. Generally speaking, using these 12 to 24 words will completely restore your wallet with exactly the same private keys and corresponding public addresses. Hence the word deterministic. It is imperative that you safely store these 12 to 24 words. Without it, you have no access to your private keys. To see how an Ethereum deterministic wallet works, see YouTube movie MetaMask, how to restore your accounts. This YouTube movie. The acronym BIP means Bitcoin Improvement Proposal. Bitcoin Improvement Proposals are design documents for introducing features or information to Bitcoin. An overview can be found at this location. As you can see over here, you can see all Bitcoin Improvement Proposals. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 
describes the implementation of mnemonic words for the generation of deterministic wallets. More information about Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 can be found at this location. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 is becoming an industry standard, which is not only used for Bitcoin wallets, but is also used in Ethereum, Dash, and other altcoin wallets. Now I will explain how the mnemonic words are implemented. First, you create a random number. This random number must have a length of 128 bits, 160 bits, 192 bits, 224 bits, or 256 bits. These lengths are always a multiple of 32. Here's an example. I create a random number which is 128 bits long. And here's a representation of this random number. I've only displayed the first two bytes and the last two bytes. Please note, more bits means better security, but means more mnemonic words. By the way, the variable ENT means entropy, and entropy means disorder. Next, you take the random number length in bits and divide it by 32. If you look at our example, which is 128 bits long, you divide it by 32, and the checksum length is 4 bits. Next, you apply the SHA-256 algorithm to the random number and assign it to the variable hash. This is our random number and we apply the SHA-256 algorithm and assign it to the variable hash. When you apply the SHA-256 algorithm, you will get this hash value. This hash value is 256 bits long. Next, we take the first checksum length bits of the hash and assign it to the variable CS, which stands for checksum. In our example, this was our hash value. If you convert this hash value into a binary representation, you will get this. I only displayed the first eight bits. Our checksum length was four bits. So these four bits is assigned to the variable CS. Next, we append the checksum at the end of the random number. So here's the random number and we append the checksum. If this is our random number, we append the checksum at the end. We assign this value to the variable end underscore cs. Next, we split the value of the variable end cs in groups of 11 bits. So here are 8 bits, and we take 3 bits to form a group of 11 bits. We do the same for all the other bytes. To see what happens at the end, here are the 4 bits plus 7 bits, which forms a group of 11 bits. Next, we convert each 11 bits into integers. If we convert this binary value into an integer, it is 1401. And if we convert this binary value into an integer, it is 1507. In this example, I only convert the first 11 bits and the last 11 bits. This is the first value and this is the last value. Each integer value is a word index. The number of combinations you will get with 11 bits is 2 to the power of 11, which is 2048. The value range is 0 to 2047. The word list can be found at this location. Here you can find the word list. There are several word lists for different languages. Let's look at the English word list. The word list starts with the word abandon. And it ends with the word zoo. As you can see, we have in total 2048 words. Each word is assigned a different word index. The word abandon has word index 0. In computer programming, we always start with the value 0. So the word abandon is assigned the word index 0. The word ability is assigned the word index value of 1. The word able is assigned the word index value of 2, etc. The word list consists of 2048 words. These words and the order must not be changed. The word list is also available in other languages. Use the word list to find the words for each word index value. In our example, word index value 1401 has the word quality, and the word index value 1507 has the word round. 
you will get an array of mnemonic words starting with the word quality and ending with the word round. Let's check this. This is the English word list. The word index value 1401 has the word quality. By the way, we have to subtract this value with 1 to get the word index value 1401. Word index value 1507 has the word round. By the way, all these word lists have also 2048 words. If you look at French, it has also 2048 words. As you can see over here. The same applies for Chinese. 2048 words. In this column, you will see the random number length in bits. And these are the number of words generated. And these are the combinations you will get. For example, if you have a random number which is 128 bits long, it will generate 12 words. With these 12 words, you can create a combination of 2048 to the power of 12. If you convert this value into power of 10, you will get this value. If you increase the random number bit length, the number of combinations will increase, which means better security. To give you an idea how big these numbers are, the number of atoms in the entire observable universe is estimated to be within the range of 10 to the power of 78 to 10 to the power of 82. To be honest, I don't know if these numbers are correct. I've searched the internet and found these values. Next, we concatenate these words into a one long string. In our example, the mnemonic words is quality and ending with round. The mnemonic phrase will be quality and ending with the word round. Optionally, for additional security, you can allow users to enter a passphrase. For example, the passphrase can be my big secret. The word mnemonic together with the passphrase is used as salt. If no passphrase is used, the passphrase is an empty string. For example, salt is the word mnemonic plus passphrase. In our example, the salt will be mnemonic my big secret. Use the password based key derivation function too together with the mnemonic phrase and salt to produce a 512-bit seed. The iteration count is set to 2048 and HMAC SHA-512 is used as the pseudo-random function. If an attacker gets his hands on your mnemonic words, the passphrase, if you have set it, will prevent the attacker to access the private keys. Password-based key derivation function 2 is purposely made slow to make brute force dictionary attack very difficult. Here a schema how the password based key derivation function 2 works. It uses the salt and the mnemonic phrase as input. It uses the HMAC SHA 512 function and 2048 iterations to generate the 512 bit seed. The 512 bit seed is used to generate deterministic wallets. How to generate deterministic wallets is explained in Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32 and Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44. It is important to know that each time you enter a different passphrase, it will generate a valid 512-bit seed and thus a valid wallet with valid public and private key pairs. This feature can help you limit your loss after a $5 wrench attack. You can set up a second deterministic wallet with some coins to satisfy the attacker. If you do not know what a $5 wrench attack is, watch this comic at this location. For copyright reasons, I cannot show you this comic. Storing your passwords at the same location as your mnemonic words is not recommended and beats the purpose. But if you lose your passphrase, you have lost access to your coins. A JavaScript implementation of Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 can be found at this location. This is the JavaScript implementation. This JavaScript library is easy to use. How this JavaScript library is used, see this location. I've implemented this JavaScript library. If you look in the source code, it's just a few lines of JavaScript code. Let's demonstrate how it works. Let's select 128 bits. You have to select the word list, 
let's select English and the password is optional so let's leave this empty and press this button here are the generated mnemonic words there are in total 12 words this is a seed which we are interested in this seed can be used to generate the private keys and the corresponding public addresses but that will be a subject for another video the number of words generated is 12 if we change the entropy length to 1660 it will generate 15 words 192 it will generate 18 words 224 it will generate 21 words 256 it will generate 24 words if we change the word list to chinese simplified it will generate chinese mnemonic words let's switch it back to english if you press the generate button we can see this seed but if you enter a password secret you press this button then the seed will change by adding a password it will change the seed so this is the other way around let's assume you have lost your wallet and you want to recreate this seed you paste your words in this text box the word list is english you press this button it will recreate the seed as you can see over here this seed matches this seed let's see what happens if you enter a password the password is secret it will generate this seed let's assume you, your wallet is corrupt you want to recreate your wallet again you enter the same words the word list is english your password is secret and as you can see the seed matches this seed a mnemonic code converter web application can be found at this location. This web application has implemented the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39, but it also implemented the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32, 44, and 49, which means it also generates private keys and the corresponding public addresses. In my next video about hierarchical deterministic wallet, I will explain how the 512-bit seed is used to create the private keys and the corresponding public addresses. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.